Welcome back to the now new and improved CK2 Plus without the horrible, horrible glitches we had during the Ring Ring campaign. Hopefully that should be fixed, and I have tested on live stream, and it does seem to be pretty decent. So, I kind of floated the idea in Discord of what we wanted to do for a new series. Consensus generally seems to be we've been very, very ha fantasy heavy recently, and I fully agree with that. So go back to the base game. People also would be interested in seeing, from what I can tell, somewhere outside of Europe for once. So we're not going to be playing as a Crusader King in the game Crusader Kings. I know, weird. The other aspect of it is there's a good reason we're playing with CK2+. Plus. So CK2+, Plus, a lot of its features now are obviously incorporated into the base game, but one of the big things it does right is the ancient religions and the religious overhauls. So you could play as a random religion, like, say, for example, Massalian, and there's actually a lot of mechanics. But all the ancient forgotten religions, so Hellenic, before it was added to the base game, Celtic, as we've done before in a previous series and other such things, actually are fleshed out with a ridiculous amount of mechanics. And there's one big one that also kind of plays into the Wanda system and is also kind of a cool start on the Iron Century, which we're going to be doing this time around down in Egypt. I'm not going to say too much about it, let's not spoil too much, but we are going to be playing as a Muslim ruler for once, which is, I think, the first time I've done this in... Forever? I don't think I've ever done a series playing as a, as a Muslim ruler, especially outside of Europe as well. Now, obviously, we're not going too far away, but I think we're going decently far enough away. I, I think I'm going to slowly start moving towards the uh, to the eastern part of the map there. I think we'll start in Alexandria, and I think we're going to play as this lovely man here, or at least we're going to design our own custom character, with the ultimate goal of rebuilding the Luxor Pyramid and restoring pharaohs into Egypt. I think that could be quite a fun playthrough. It's going to be very, very difficult. Unlike, say, you know, playing as a Christian heretic in the Christian world where, you know, people might think you're a heretic, but at least you worship the same God. This time around, we are trying to resurrect something from complete scratch. We don't get the luxury of reforming the religion either, so we can't just make it a super OP aggressive religion or anything like that. We are very much limited by what the religion has already got done. It's quite a strict playthrough. So, I guess... Nothing left to do but actually customize our man here. Ethnicity, I'm not going to mess around with too much, but we are obviously going to build a, a beautiful... Oh my god, that one was perfect. I wish I hadn't randomed. Um, okay, right. So we want a very surprised man. I saw those surprised man eyes. Where have you gone? Uh, is this one of the new face packs? Because it looks very different to what I remember from the base game. I remember a lot of the base game faces, particularly around this region, were just not updated for ages and looked like complete garbage. Um, you know what? That's fine. Now, where was that? He looks very jolly. We've got a very jolly man. Don't like his hair. It's a little bit too, you know, neat and tidy. Let's go for something a bit more. I like you can just see it peeking there from under his turban. We've got anything else? Um, oh, man, they've, they've used a lot of the base hairs. That's kind of cool. Oh, yeah, no, we'll go for that. That says business up front, uh, party at the back. I like it. All right, the flag. Now, I've not actually done... I've not played as a Muslim character in absolutely ages. Probably not long since after the Sword of Islam actually came out. Because, you know, it's, it's an interesting playstyle. But I found the decadent system an absolute pain in the ass. So this is going to be maybe even more challenging for me. So if you guys want to watch me lose, you've kind of found the right series for it. Okay, what is that? Slightly off-center with a star at the top. I'm in. Okay, fine. We'll go for that one. Um, we want the very famous... We want the very famous green swords of our dynasty... Set against an eclipse. I think that looks fantastic. I'm pretty happy with that dynasty shield already. Looks like garbage, and that's exactly where we're going to start. Right, as with as with names, I will admit I'm not particularly fluent or even remotely fluent in Arabic, or do I know many Arabic names at all. So I think I'm going to go with something that I'm not going to pronounce wrong and offend a load of people. Something that's very simple and straightforward. I did this during the Baguette Pack campaign as well, so that's about the limit of my... Uh, the Baguette campaign as well, the limit of my um, multiculturalism is France, which I think says it all, really. So this time around, we are going to go for the wonderful... Oh my god, this is the most important bit, because this character is going to be our, our maker or our breaker, isn't he? My good friend, Pon Dodley. I have no idea what to do for this start in particular as well. I don't know what sort of play style we want to go for. I don't know, you know, whether we want to go super aggressive leader, whether we want to go intrigue and try and set ourselves up quite kind of nicely. I mean, we could always go for an entry character to start off with the X. That's something I never normally do, huh? Try and kill ourselves into a good position. Uh, well, obviously, kill other people, but I mean, we're going to get ourselves into a good position doing that. We could go Midas Touched and start building up. We could obviously go Brilliant Strategist. And the, the reason I picked this start date is, of course, the Abbasids are actually at their weakest at this point. That's the whole point of the Iron Century. It's one of the challenges to play as the Abbasids and rebuild the realm. It's very fractured. Uh, the Muslim world is very fractured at this stage. You know, Northern Africa particularly is kind of ripe for the picking. So actually picking a soldier wouldn't be too difficult, but I'm going to go with Elusive shadow um in fact do we even want to go elusive shadow marshal plus three entry plus nine diplomacy plus three stewardship minus one personal combat skill plus 16 sure why the hell not then let's try and build a half decent carrot here oh my god short is minus 46 why um vassal opinion minus 20 for being short are you joking 
So it's a bigger malice to be short. Oh my god, it's like triple the malice to be short, and it's hunchback. That's insane. All right, well, we do have, of course, the advanced congenital traits, that type of thing as well. So there's going to be a lot to pick apart from here. Um, wow, I don't even know where to start. There's like different levels of... Imbecile is minus 133. I feel like there's something we could do with that. Minus 133? Are you sure? Fuck it. Okay, why not? I'm going to take that, even though it's probably a garbage idea because we're going to end up, you know, passing that on to our kids. But we can go for just about every other decent congenital trait at that point. So we go with, like, dominant voice. We'll be a warrior. We'll be a man who's adept at killing. We'll be high intrigue, high martial. That's a weird combo that I would never normally go for in a thousand years. All right. So we've got minus four stewardship, minus three learning as it stands right now. Let's go for formidable fighter. My God, that was 69 age. Jesus, the golden number, but my god, man. Um, there's also a formidable fighter there, which is 59 age. So slightly, slightly cheaper. Um, this character is one of the greatest warriors in the world, favored by God and dreaded on the battlefield. Yeah, me too. Um, sure, I mean, it'd be kind of cool to be a gladiator. We could go for so much. Let me see what I can come up with here. What a horrible character. What the fuck have I done? So bear with me on this one. It might look like shit. But through gameplay, we are going to be absolutely having an uphill battle to start off with here. But I think that could be awesome. Because normally we start every series with just this ridiculous powerhouse of a character. Starting off as this shit man. And then slowly turning him into a, into a great guy that has the potential to pass down many, many traits to the next generation. I think is going to be great. So we've got prolific, gives fertility and attraction. But because we do have many other traits we want to pass on here. Such as strong, dominant voice. We've got agile as well. Gives him a lot of bonuses to, again, fertility, martial health. It's all like strong, but slightly weaker. We've gone for slothful and craven. And also frail. Why have I gone for all of those? Well, using the hunting focus, we can get rid of every single one of those. Similarly, I mean, Craven is quite easy to get rid of. Same with Slothful. You take the rulership focus, hunting focus, theology, anything like that will get rid of that. We've also gone with Drunkard. Same reason. We take theology. There's a chance to get rid of both Drunkard and Slothful. The only downside is I've gone for Ignorant, which is a minus three to everything and personal combat skill minus 20. Then also Short. So Short looks bad. But short is like a minus, what did I say, like from 49, something like that. There was a different short trait that has much bigger sort of general opponent's personal combat hits rather than vassal opinion hits. It's going to be about the same uh, sort of impact overall, though. Uh, we've got frail, we've got cynical, kind, and erudite. Now, cynical, kind, and erudite are all sort of the same reason why I picked those, because they all give age minuses, which allows us to really play around a little bit now, because we're only 16, so we can put some points into other stats as well. I think a couple of points into stewardship, you might all agree with me on this one, probably wouldn't hurt. Um, let's put some points into Diplomacy. Take us up to 10, 8, 10, 15, 2. You've got to remember, we get rid of, you know, Slothful, Craven. If we get rid of Frail, if we get rid of Kind, that will take us back up to quite a high level of Marshal. We're looking at around 15 Marshal with that. Plus, we've got so many traits we could pass on. This man is a pod and doddly if I've ever seen him. Let's do it. I'm, I'm happy with this start. It's going to be so weird to start off with here. Right, let's load our rules up. Um, everything should be as it is normally. Ancient religions we want to turn off for the time being. That was just where I was testing things. Now, I've also made some of the artifacts added by the, the many different artifacts mod. I don't know if I've already mentioned that, but we've got like five different artifacts mod kicking around. I have made some of them very specific to our religion that we want to end up playing as. There are Egyptian artifacts that are just kind of generic. So instead, I've made it so that they're guaranteed to spawn, but so you can only use them if they're of the religion that eventually we want to try and resurrect. All right. Um, everything should be good here. Um, let me just take a look and sort of see what else we got going on with here. Um, is there a... So that one should work. Cool. HIP and CK2 plus cultures are supported. Nice. We've got some other societies going on as well that I'll talk about actually when we get into things here. Um, yep, that looks cool to me. Right, let's save those rules just in case it all crashes and goes horribly wrong, which it actually might here, let's be honest. My god, this is going to be a very, very strange campaign. You're playing as a, a, a Misery Sunny Amir. Wow, there we go. I've learned so much already. So I actually need to get sort of um, up to date on, on the actual religious side of things. Like I said, it's been uh, so, so long since I've played any Islamic character in CK2. So we have uh, obviously jihads rather than crusades. Fleets can navigate major rivers. That's nice. Uh, population of other groups pay the infidel tax. Cool. Sunny men have up to four wives. That's absolutely fantastic as well. And then the Al-Kilafa... 
as sunny. Uh, maybe held by, I assume that's the, the, the caliphate, right? Maybe held by a secular non-theocracy ruler. So we could actually become the leader of our own religion here. What happens if you convert at that stage? I assume it wouldn't let you, so we'd have to give it away or something like that. We are eight to government type. That means we can hold castle, temple, fort, and hospital audience without penalties. What exactly does that do for us that's different to feudal? Um, can we revoke titles from government vassals? That's fine. Can we revoke titles from duchy tier vassals without objections from other vassals? Oh shit, that's good. Wow. That's actually really good. No gender succession laws, because of course, why not? You are limited to basically just agnatic, right? Other vassals will not object to vassal retraction. Holy shit, that's insane. So we can just take what we want from people after we've conquested them, is what you're telling me. Cool. Can't grant kingdoms and empires to characters of government with a different group, so you have to give it to only Icta characters. Fine. That sounds like an interesting game style. We have to... Do we not have to worry about decadence uh, this time around? I swear, is that not normally a decadence meter? Is that is that sheer instead? I actually have no idea now that I think about it. Um, let's go to like the... Yeah, no, I guess that's a different religion group. Um, no? Is just decadence not in anymore? I have absolutely no idea, like I said, how this works. So, um, kind of... Oh my god, there's so much. Kind of on my own with that one. I, I will, I'll, I'll take a look into it. And obviously, I'll, I'll read all your comments about any sort of hints you've got about playing Muslim. Because I have not played in ages. Right, we've got the Hermetic Society, the Assassin, the Wolf Warriors, the Jinn Sorcerers. Cool. Great Trade League. That mod has brought back, so I do love this mod a lot. We've got the Sand Pit, which is um, not a video you should look up. But it is a, by the looks of it, Warriors Lodge that we can join. Is that just the Chivalric Society? It is. Okay, cool. So we actually played with this with the Mountain Campaign, I believe it was. Because with the Ancient Religions, obviously, won't have... Warrior Lodges, or we might not have access to them at least. We've got the Mavelli, which sounds to me like it's just judging by the sound alone. Uh, also known as the Whirling Dervishes, by the way. This is a um, like a temple order, like the Benedictine order or something, huh? Oh my god, it absolutely is. That's cool. Okay. That sounds very useful in that case. We might have to go for that. Baba gives you plus 15% fertility. Is that not supposed to be a minus? Well, I guess we should join that one early and try and get on with it then. The Alan Sar. Okay, what are you guys? What, what, is, what is this one? This is another chivalric society by the looks of it? Oh, I guess not. Um, it's like a holy order or something along those lines. Yeah, there's an option to find a holy order there, which seems kind of interesting. We've also got the Ghazis as well, which I assume is the same thing. So we've got two sort of holy order type societies there. Let's join the Mev Levy starting off with here. You know what? I really should have waited until we got an air or something, shouldn't I? God, this is loud in my ears. I apologize if this is loud in the video. Who keeps changing my audio? Get out of here. It's probably why I did a live stream yesterday. Anyway, um, that seems like it could be kind of OP. Particularly the plus 15% fertility when you hit the highest level. Maybe that's intentional. I have absolutely no idea. All right. What are our options then? We have Clement Sunny Caliphate. That seems kind of like it would be an incredible thing to do. Um, what is supposed to be true? Extremely decadent dynasty or decadent. Maybe they've changed it so it's like a modifier instead. Uh, we've got efficient domain because we have a small domain size. I don't know besides that. Okay, interesting. Um, we've got... Shut the gates. Recruit, recruit court physician. Go on a harsh to Mecca, which is just your pilgrimage. Compose a book. Tour the Kemetic sites, we can, basically if we own one of the, the major Kemetic sites, so like Giza, Luxor, Alexandria, we can go on a tour if we have all of them, I believe it is. Um, so this will show up if you own one of them, then if you have all of them, you can go on a tour, and that will allow us to potentially convert to the old Egyptian ways. But of course, you know, that would basically paint a giant target on our back at this stage, huh? Um, we've got different schools as well. I believe one is... Uh, one is sort of like conservative, the other is more liberal type of things. Rationality, reason, and free will. So yeah, that's the one. Yeah, members of the opposing school will disprove. That will benefit our research. This one is more strict, sort of uh, orthodox nature, isn't it? Emphasizes tradition, revelation, and occasionalism. Yeah, exactly that. Okay, cool. Right. Wow, this is a lot to get my head around all of a sudden. So what have we got? We've got Alexandria, obviously. Kind of a decent capital to get there. We get uh, juicy attacks, excuse me. Uh, that is against Coptic Christians. Right, so our capital is actually Coptic. We've got the Lighthouse of Alexandria that we can't do anything with because it is a historical holy work, so we can't, oh, sorry, great work. So we actually can't piss around with that one. Um, right, and there is a trade person in capital. Oh my god, we've got the Silk Road, haven't we? Oh, well, in the base game you'd have the Silk Road, but we're playing with, um, Flogi, so we actually have trade routes everywhere. Or oh, this might be CK2+, plus. now that I think about it. I think it is CK2+. Plus. Well, we are in a major, major trade route, though, as you can see all roads lead to Alexandria there. I think that's how it goes. Anyway, let's absolutely build that early on. Just to give us that nice little tax bonus. So what are sort of long-term goals that we've got here? Um, I think starting off with... Oh, so, sorry, short-term goals. We should probably go on a pilgrimage immediately. While the game is paused... This is kind of scummy. While the game is paused, everything will only cost one gold. Because the game has yet to calculate your monthly income. So for events, it will always give you the minimum. Because right now, you can't just having zero monthly balance. Um, so if you want to... If you're playing as a merch republic, now's a good time to invest in economies. That type of thing. Because it will only cost you one gold. Anyway... 
That's that set up. Right, council, what's next then? Welcome aboard, court chaplain. We're going to have to hunt down a wife in a minute, aren't we? Um, court physician. Have we got just no one we can give the title to? Because I don't really want to spend much more money than we have to to start off with here. You know what you'll do. Akbar, court imam of... He's so good. Of the Dudley Imara. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. Dominant voice, just temperate, charitable, humble. You seem like a pretty good physician. Court educator. You could also be for a good court educator now I think about it. Um... Actually, they, actually, all of them are fairly good, you know? This guy, patient, brave. This guy, humble, deceiver. You've got to think of what we want to pass on to our ass. I'm going to go with Akbar as well, because he seems pretty decent in that regard. So the Trade Master is part of the Great Trade League mod, which we do have uh, that sort of collection. It's the same mod altar for all three. I do like these mods. The Trade League is a lot of micromanagement. So for the time being, until I get my head around this particular government style, religious, that type of thing, we'll we'll sort of leave this to the AI, and we can do that by assigning a Trade Master title to someone of decent stewardship there. And they'll just basically ask us for gold, and they'll do investments on our behalf, and we could make a profit, that type of thing. All right, uh, Corp Musician. I assume these are just all random honorary titles. There you go, my friends. We'll just also assign commanders for the time being. Okay, cool. Scroll down for the Cartographer. Oh, hello. Um... What is this from again? Is this the Trade League again? I have no idea. Sure. Let's set ourselves up a cartographer then. You'll do. What does that do for us? Um, standby or resource map. Cartographer will show you a map of the resources collected in each province. Oh, I remember this. So if you're super into economy games, if you're into more of the 4Xs, which I am. I've got like a million hours in Sins of the Solar Empire. Then this thing might be more your type of thing. So, each province has a particular type of resource. So, France, for example, if we take a look there, has gemstones in this particular province, or wheat in this particular province, flax in that one. Whereas, if we go to the other side of the world, you'll see that, you know, India has, like, uh, terrain jungle. They have, apparently, a fishery in the middle of the jungle. We won't question it too much. Anyway, point being is you can collect particular resources, sell it to other provinces at a profit. So, if you take, you know, a province that is uh, less agricultural, more industrial, and take them agricultural goods, then they'll be, they'll be a big fan of that one. That's, like I said, a lot of micromanagement, which we're going to ignore for the time being, or maybe forever, because that's kind of something you might want to do uh, in your own game and sort of plan that out meticulously. I'm not never planning things out meticulously. All right, what have we got then? I think to start off, we need to get married. I think we can all agree on that. Another good reason to play CK2, by the way, a million ambitions. I've had it in way too many series where you just pick an ambition and then, you you know, you can get through the base game one so quickly and then you have none less left to pick. Choose focus. Um... I am thinking it's seduction to start off with. Also because it will boost our intrigue. Plus we do need an heir as soon as possible if you don't mind. What's the government type? Open. Right. Okay. That sucks. So basically our strongest child will inherit. And then everyone else can challenge him for the for the title. So we're going to get challenged him for the title like it's a wrestling match. Uh, basically they can threaten the succession. We're going to have a lot of succession issues to start off with here. It's going to be a very difficult game. Especially with also this. We're not going to be the most liked ruler. Anyway. Let's find ourselves wife. Alright. I'm looking for anybody who is prodigious. Let's see. Prodigy. Um, uh, we need a woman. I was going to say there's someone right there. But of course, he is a man. It'd be kind of difficult to get babies out of him. No matter how hard you try, it just would never work. She'll do. Erica. She's actually kind of close. Um, she's also a pretty good man. She would be better just because her stats are high and she's also got lustful. Are you a man? We'd never be able to get her to court, though. Send her a gift. How much in favor? 80? Yeah. We take out a loan. Take out a loan to buy a wife. Um... We need to be... Oh, no one's a money lender yet. No money lenders have spawned in. We'll have to wait for some other characters to decide on that one. You know what? We can guarantee this woman's coming to court. And we can have multiple wives. So we could get her first and then also put her on the back burner for the future. This could be good. Getting a prodigy wife. We could potentially get, you know, prodigy, prolific, strong, dominant voice, agile, if we get lucky. We'll be... Obviously, knowing me, I'm going to end up with an ignorant, short child. Anyway, Erica, please come to my court as soon as possible. Um, oh, she's, she's already here. Well, wow, that was easy. Wait, was she already in my court to start off with? No, I just invited her, you big idiot. All right. <laughs> Jenny thought I sent her a gift and I was waiting for a response on that one rather than inviting her because, you know, it's the whole favorite system. All right, that'll do. Perfect. Okay, good start then. We've got ourselves a wife. Can we go to China? They are... No, they are in the Civil War right now. That's a real shame. Okay, obviously China we've got open, but... I mean, obviously we're not in Diplo range, but we would have had that Silk Road anyway. What do you want, my friend? Counselor. Um, specifically Chancellor, we could be his diplomat. And what, what are you right now? You are, you basically have the whole of the Middle East, so specifically all like Jerusalem up towards, uh, sort of Damascus, that area. Cool. To the strong skull upon. Thank you, my friend. Chancellor, really? Have you got no one better? We've got 10 diplomacy, so it's not that, I mean, obviously it's power. So we'll take power for power's sake right now, because we really haven't got much else to do. Feel the ambition to get married. Right, let's groom an heir next, because that gives us a guaranteed 20% fertility. Um, or not. Or it's just not on the list. Am I blind? Um, he goes to the block. Fine. We'll go for Sun. Because he wasn't on the list. 
Okay, cool. Let's blast forward then. Let's get ourselves a child. We're also going to Mecca. I guess we're not going to have a child anytime soon because, of course, we are going to uh, well, this general direction. Goodbye, wife. It was nice knowing you for those brief few seconds. Nearby, you see a group of bandits have encircled a group of fellow pilgrims. It is very likely they will rob and kill them. Um, gain five piety or become wounded. I mean, wounded isn't a big deal, is it? We might we might get something nice out of this. In fact, I didn't even think about it, but going on a pilgrimage might actually promote this guy. Getting rid of, like, slothful, getting rid of drunkards, something like that. As you stop for camp one evening, you notice an old man in poor clothing has made a camp at the same place. Um, he wants some bread. You know what, old man? You can have some bread. Just get rid of my sloth on an exchange. <gasps> nice! That's cool. The most evil traits in this man are severe stinginess and uninhabited cowardice. Thank you. Um, I am no evil man. We lose the trait Craven. Wow, that was definitely worth it. Holy shit, I, I didn't realize you could actually, like I said, I'm played as Muslim character in ages, so I'm kind of surprised that worked as I kind of expected it to. Thanks, CK2. Okay. Do we want to get proud, or do we want to get humble? Shout at every circuit. Shout only the first three times. Um, I mean, this one, what would that do for a same trip? And what does proud do? I'm looking for stat bonuses specifically. Christian church pinning don't like us. I mean, what do we give a shit about the Christian church at this stage, huh? Prestige. Prestige, more useful than piety. It is when you've got minus 170 of it. Absolutely. Put me on board. We didn't get it anyway, so it doesn't feel too bad. We gained one health, though. Is that permanent? Jesus. Well, that cancels out wounded. Uh, does drunkard affect health this time? Okay, so CK2+, plus, it does actually affect health. Thank God for that. So even if we don't lose drunkard, we're not, you know, going to drop down dead from too much drink. As you travel back home from Mecca, you encountered a very poor village. Um, I must help them. 13.6 gold for 10 piety. Make me lose slothful. Come on. Tell me I'm not a slothful man or something like that. Nope, we're, we're back. Okay, fine. We got the pilgrim trait, though. Um, Hajaj is maybe how you say that. Muslim opinion plus 5. That's pretty decent. And then multi piety 0 0.25. Good work, team. Now all I need is a sun. Now, are they attacking us specifically? Um, the Ikushidid I I subjugation of... Oh, that's us. It's an offensive war, right? Okay, fine. I'm not too bothered in that, that, that case. That's, that's not a big deal. I thought they were going for us then for a second, which is why I was a little more concerned. Um, they are definitely... This is definitely an offensive war. Yeah, we're, we're attacking them. Sure. I'm not going to get involved in that. Not really interested. I just want to build up my realm a little bit, you know, see what we've got going for us. What buildings do we have? Um, we've got a dungeon. We've got great chambers. We've got a moat. We've got stables. Oh, this is good. Matt, up. Oh, we're alone. We're fucking... Why? <laughs> we've already gone completely insane and we've been playing all of about five minutes. Shit, really? Well, I mean, that's something, huh? How much prestige are we getting and how long? Oh, shit, we need more wives. Right, okay, cool. Um, is, is anyone a moneylender yet? Can I, can I borrow some money? Uh, excuse me, can I, can I borrow some money? Thank you. Right, where did, where did that wife go? Excuse me, I need to borrow you if you don't mind. I mean, forever. Send her a gift and then buy her a favor. And then she's not a counselor or anything. She is definitely not. And then invite her to court. Nice. Okay, so that's two prodigy wives, one of which is lost all and one of which is also, I mean, fucking nuts. 23 diplomacy is over double hours, so I'll absolutely take that. To the great Hajaj Pond, thank you very much. Let's arrange marriage between you and lovely Pond there. Okay, now we need oh, some prestige, Jesus. Um... Okay, prodig. There's no other prodigies out there in the world, huh? Slowed filters, pro prodig. No, there's none. We've got them all. Well done. The only two prodigy women in the world, and they're both ours. All right, I am looking for. Can we maybe get married to someone who's highborn for once, so I don't lose any more friggin' piety? Is there anyone good who's highborn? Is probably my next question. Any congenital traits at all, I will take. If not, we'll just take lustful for the time being. You know, throw enough shit, some will stick. Okay, we'll take lustful in that case. Um. Hello, what have you got for me? Bunch of lustful children. My god. Um, this is mm, this is getting into dangerous territory. Rasa, you'll do. Boom. Okay, he's going to say yes as well. Hopefully we won't lose a huge amount of uh, prestige there. And of course, they don't want to have any less wives because we, we're kind of getting screwed here. So Intrigue is our highest stat. We kind of need to be just basically plotting always. Um, so what what actually land is ours then? Let's take a look at it. Actually, we're fairly fairly decent size uh, duke there, aren't we? So our immediate neighbor then. Amir Jafar, you are absolutely on my kill list, my friend. Can't even plot to kill him. My god, why? Even with 37%, I guess he's liked. Or, I mean, he's shrewd, trusting. Trusting would kind of imply to me that we could probably kill him a little bit more. Okay, what's this one? This is our liege's territory. How many troops has he got personally in that case? He doesn't seem to have much land of his own. In fact, is that all, that's all he's got. Just Cairo, I believe that is, right? Um... That's pretty insane. Wait, is that one Cairo or is this one Cairo? I actually, I actually have absolutely no idea. Um, well, there's there's the pyramids of Giza, so we've got to be around there somewhere. Okay, um, we could we could 
potentially go to war like really early on here because he's only gonna have 10,000 we're gonna have what's our maximum levy size here um I do want to kick those other ones so we get slightly higher Marshall but yeah it's not too bad to start off with here we're not in such a bad position as I thought gotta focus on getting those kids so Kasbar level two cool that'll give us a decent amount of levy size in that case it's another 10 percent so that's just your that's just your keep right wow that's incredible. The Wyman's of Plenty when I must have left my company when I was no more unsteady on my feet. I must have drunk enough to become unconscious. But when I woke up, it was Chief, this man, who told me that I donated a small sum of money to charity and promised to never drink again. And he would not let me go without punishment. Okay. Wow. So, <laughs> small sum of money. Yeah, you're not wrong. That's two of our worst traits starting off here already gone. Suddenly, I'm feeling like we're not in such a horrible situation. Obviously, becoming lunatic probably because of the drink, huh? If we get rid of Slothful... There's actually not a lot wrong with this character at that stage. I mean, if, obviously, keep ignoring Lunatic. For no matter. Oh, my God. Lunatic is minus four to everything. What? Holy shit. Since when is that the case? Oh, man. Um, we're going to have to take Theology Focus then for quite some time. Because Lunatic is a very difficult trait to get rid of. I think you can become Lunatic and then flip to Possessed. Which actually might not be too bad in this situation. Let's see what Possessed looks like. Um, right. So, Possessed is infinitely better. If it can flip from Lunatic to Possessed, I'd be quite happy with that. Or, we go for the Theology Focus and we can just randomly get rid of it. Um, while attending prayer one morning, I noticed my brother Musa dowsing off, drowsing off in his seat. Meanwhile, our fellow members of the Me Me Mev Levy are deep in contemplation. Um, we could draw a mustache on his face. Who are you? Um, you my, you're, you're my vassal's vassal. Absolutely. He did request a mustache, didn't he? I remember it well. I scurry off to fetch the mink before I gently sit down besides the sleeping muscle and begin my work. It takes a few minutes, but in the end, I'm more than satisfied. His new mustache is marvellous. I mean, it looks fantastic. It looks just like the real goddamn thing. What's not to like? Apparently, he wasn't a big fan of that, unsurprisingly. Wow. As Salamu ala alakum. Uh, al 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 you, you get the point. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hello to my friend. The heretic life of a ruler, the hectic life of a ruler, or well, heretic in our case, rarely allows for sufficient time for contemplation. Absolutely. Secluded meditation. Let's get rid of this. Can also get rid of Lunatic as well. I didn't actually consider that too much, but this could be very, very good for us. Why is our devotion so little? Um, oh, because our learning is garbage. And in fact, the best thing we've got is Erudite, which actually saved us some points on character creation. Man. So this is the event. This guy's asking us for some gold. Obviously, we're not going to do that because that costs us a fortune. We actually kind of want to pay off this debt as soon as possible. Now, I believe at level one, it just gives us the yeah, Temple Vassal Pinning Minus 3. So that's not so bad. But I kind of like it as an emergency fund just in case we get like a Peasant Uprising or something. Quickly borrow 300 gold and then, you know, use that to hire Mercs if necessary. We could invest it. There's no reason we couldn't obviously keep investing it into the capital here. Um, how much money are we making per month? 13.75 is insane. Thank God for religious tax. Why don't we go on a heist? I know there's a lot of very, very powerful Muslim artifacts. I don't know too many off the top of my head here, but I know there is one called the Banner of Muhammad, which could be somewhere out there in the world. It is. Um, are you not out of Diplo range? You're not. Okay, here we go. Right. So, in this lovely man's treasury is the Holy Banner of Muhammad. I have two options to steal artifact. Do you see that? What's the difference? Um, this one... Oh, right, so this one, because it, it, if it's an artifact they have equipped, you actually can't steal it. Um, so we are going to try and steal the Holy Banner of Muhammad here. It's quality 5 artifact, obviously the best you can get in game. Morale damage plus 10%, morale defense plus 10%, monthly prestige plus 0.1, martial plus 1, same religious opinion plus 5. Huh. That is pretty insane. The same religion opinion alone, I'm already a big fan of, but the morale defense and the morale damage are pretty nuts. Okay. Good luck. Who shall be our accomplice in our high seat? We can take our martial, who's not bad. We aren't exactly the best character in the game. In fact, this could be a horrible, horrible idea. Um, we'll take our martial. Oh, man, how the hell have we got this low martial? Ignorant. I mean, obviously. Oh, this fucking lunatic. This is this might kill us. You've arrived at Khan Magatin of Kazan's capital. As expected, it's heavily guarded. Oh, wow. This is kind of low success chance, huh? 58% chance we've got to do three of these. So... Uh, <laughs> Fucking lunatic to start off with. Thank you. Okay, we can run away, fight our way out. There, the worst case scenario in that is we're imprisoned. Second worst case scenario is we're wounded. This one, um, same thing again. Or beg for forgiveness. Uh, there's a chance of us dying, right? Um, oh, it's thirty percent chance of successful escaping. So let's just set what our highest chance of escaping is. So I'm gonna take because I don't really give a shit about wounded. We'll say that that is around eighty-three percent chance of success. Around, around you know, eighty-two, eighty-three percent chance. What about this one? Um. 50, but we lose 500 prestige. Okay, sure. We're going to fight our way out then. My god, we actually succeeded. We got we got wounded, 
But to be fair, we had wounded before. It, it, it healed and scarred up. Oh, apparently we've lost it instantly. Wow, I was going to say we might get a high level scar at that, which would be kind of nice. But I guess not. Thanks, game. So I'll talk about a little bit of what I expect the end game to be then. Because I'm kind of, you know, getting to grips with this. It's not too different from Feudal, is it, at the end of the day. So the... Obvious feature would be to, to convert, flip over, you know, restore the high priesthood, build some pyramids everywhere, that type of thing. There are a lot of other features I haven't mentioned. You know, there's a lot of events added by CK2 Plus to these ancient religions to really make them feel worth playing. Along with that, there are certain other artifacts, which I'll see if we can track one down now. I know one is we can find the Rosetta Stone. Rosetta. There it is. Oh, man, it actually did spawn in, huh? Nice. Rosetta Stone. A decree issued on behalf of King Ptolemy in 196 BC, written in ancient Egyptian. So, if you have that, it's a learning plus three month prestige 0 0.5. That's one of the examples. Um, there is the bust of Nefertiti, I think, is around somewhere as well. Man, where are these? I should be checking where they're actually located. Okay, that one's made itself all the way kind of over through the Middle East to Persia. They're all starting to get towards Persia. Shit. Um, that's kind of cool. You have to publicly follow the Kemetic religion to actually get any benefits from that, because this guy's just a fancy statue, huh? Gives health, same religious opinion, month of prestige, that's kind of nice. There was another one as well, but I don't remember what it is off the top of my head. Where was the Rosetta Stone? We need to keep a very close track of these things, because these are going to be kind of, you know, essential to our religious rest restoration. Um, oh my god, he's right there. He's actually in Egypt still. That's very lucky. That one hasn't traveled too far. There are other artifacts as well. Not going to spoil it, but we've got some kind of cool ones kicking around. Now, not only that, we've got the, the, the sort of fantastical mythological artifact mod. So there are things kicking around like, if it's here, um, Pandora's box. Oh my god, it actually does exist. Along with that, there's a whole bunch of Greek artifacts. You can get like, um, I think Poseidon's trident I've seen before. How do you spell Poseidon? Posei... Pose... I don't, you know what, let's find, uh, let's find a different one. I don't know how you spell that. There's the Nemean Lion's Pelt, which is probably this guy. There we are, part of the Nemean Lion, look at that. So we've got a lot of kind of this, this ancient influence on the world at this point, and that's kind of the whole point of this playthrough, huh? I think we'll leave this one here for today. Thank you all for watching. Appreciate your patience in the first episode, as always. There's lots of setup when we first kick things off here. You know, not not just our character creation, but, you know, council stuff, getting marriages, joining societies, that type of thing. What I'll do is I'll start drawing up a game plan for next episode. I'll, I'll get some idea of how we want to, you know, get our independence. I'll start building up our power base, expanding out, you know, that type of thing. Trying to conglomerate power before we can uh, break free of our liege. Then maybe consider the, the, the religious side of things as well. It's going to be fairly tricky. But uh, I have a good feeling about this one. I think this is going to be very, very cool. And see if for the first time in, in a thousand years we can have ourselves a pharaoh somewhere on the map. Let's give a shout out to what I'm hoping is the new Patreon list completed. I did have to manually update this one, which was kind of penny ass. There were a lot of people missing that. And I didn't want to make sure anybody was left out here. So a big thank you to Alpha Scuff, Asuna Kirito, Atmosis, Average Gamer 419, Baking Kitten, Sidini, Crazy Pack, Croesus, Donald, Facundo Vasquez, Fungus King, Fluffinutter, Gogolus, Harik, Jimbo, Josh Lindine, Tesla, Justin Wallace, Caden Carter, Michael Mullen, Mr. Smug, Muskratful, Nathan Flores, Necrofin, and Pelvis Presley, Skaz, Sothal the Swede, Stannis Amanis, The Forsaken One, Toby Cruz, Tom Terry 18, Tyler Kendall, and Vacuous Backers. Thank you for your support of the Insane Tier Lovers on Patreon. Thank you for making the channel possible in the first place. Hope you guys are enjoying uh, some more videos here. Oh, my end card hasn't updated. Hang on, bear with. I'm going to quickly just... Uh, <clears throat> right, here you go. Boom. There we go. So that no one else asks me for any more. Fucking Dark Souls, for the love of God, man. Thank you as well. <laughs> Oh, by the way, um, second channel, CK2 VOD's going up there as well. So if you want more CK2, even more than two videos a day, go over there for a third video per day. Am I going to die at the age of 30? Probably. Thank you as well to what I hope is the other updated Patreon list. Asro, Adam Person, Akari, Andrew Wilson, Ben Troke, Vesemus Max, Better Valerian, Chris, David Van Diepen, Don, Dunk Honey 2 and 7, Fraser Brennan, Gabriel Faulkner, Gabriel Van Ders, Gaz, GDWK Run, Genji Zerka, Grey, Haji Dumar, Hancock, I see the Great, Irish, Israel, Jay Lehrer, James Barnes, Jason, Jose, Euron DeVries, Jessica Smith, Jordan Campbell, Joseph Beard, Justin Plock, Justin Walters, Lemon Stark, Lasme, Luana Thomas, Luke Wallace, Matthew, Monty, Nathaniel Lindbergh, Nick, Noah Gallimore, Pan Samu, Panthel, Peyton Denisar, Russian Oligarch, Billionaire, The Insane Pickle, Wesley Grayson, Will Wade, Wolfie, Yorkus, Zach Peller, and Zico too. Thank you for your support. See you guys all tomorrow for uh, more progression, hopefully, on building a massive pyramid.